11 Strange Coincidences in History. Number 11. Unsinkable. In the early 1900s, White Star Line was one of the premier companies in the shipping industry. In an attempt to position themselves as lead dog in luxury passenger ships, it built three of the biggest ships ever made, the Olympic, Britannic, and Titanic. In a run of bad luck, all of these three vessels would have accidents. One employee of White Star Line, a woman named Violet Jessup, would witness every one. Jessup worked as a stewardess for the company and was working on the Olympic when it crashed into another ship, the HMS Hawk. The crash was minor and there were only a few injuries, but Jessup maybe should have taken the incident as a sign to look for a new career. Jessup was hired on for the maiden voyage of the Titanic in 1912, and as we all know, the disaster was one of the worst in the history of seafaring. Jessup luckily survived the sinking, but instead of quitting or vowing to never set foot on a ship again, she persevered and continued working for White Star Line. In 1915, she was on the third of the Olympic-class ocean liners, Britannic, working as a nurse during World War I. The ship was sailing in the Mediterranean Sea when it hit a naval mine and sunk. Unlike Titanic, the crew was much better prepared for the disaster, and significantly fewer lives were lost. Jessup was again among the survivors, and completed the trifecta of being on the wrong ship at the wrong time. Surprisingly, though only taking a small hiatus, she kept working for the company until 1950. Number 10. Twain's Comet. There's a saying that goes, our fates are written in the stars, but for one legendary American writer, his fate was tied to a comet. Mark Twain, who would be known for writing literary classics like Huckleberry Finn and The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, was born as Samuel Clemens in 1835. This happened to be the same year that Halley's Comet passed by the Earth as it does every 76 years. In 1909, when Twain was 75 and started feeling his age, he was quoted as saying, I came in with Halley's Comet in 1835. It is coming again next year, and I expect to go out with it. It'll be the greatest disappointment in my life if I don't go out with Halley's Comet. Well, Twain's prediction came true, and he passed away in 1910 from a heart attack, one day after the comet's brightness peaked. Number 9. Musical Neighbors Friedrich Handel was a German-born composer famous for the oratorio Messiah that features the well-known Hallelujah Chorus. Jimi Hendrix was an American rock and roller famous for psychedelic songs like Purple Haze and Voodoo Child. So what do these two music legends have in common? Well, even though they lived 200 years apart, they both spent portions of their lives in London, England. And if they had lived at the same time, they would have been next-door neighbors. Handel spent the last 36 years of his life on two floors located on 25 Brook Street, and Hendrix lived in a flat at 23 Brook Street from 1968 through 1969. So needless to say, if you are a music lover and traveling to London, Brook Street is a must-visit. Number 8. Better to be late. Beatrice, Nebraska. The year? 1950. The West Side Baptist Church Choir always met at 7.20 on Wednesday nights for practice, and little did the singers know that at 7.25 that night, the church would explode. But in a bizarre series of coincidences, or providence, all of the 15 choir members were running late and avoided the explosion, with varying excuses such as car trouble, not waking up from a nap in time, and a dress that got dirty needing last-minute ironing, they all were spared a horrible fate. The explosion turned out to have been caused by a gas leak and completely obliterated the church and nearby buildings. What makes the incident even more bizarre is that none of the choir members were in the habit of being late. Number 7. Hopkins Happenstance Anthony Hopkins, most famous for his portrayal of Hannibal Lecter in Silence of the Lambs, was just beginning his film career in 1974 when he landed a role in the screen adaptation of George Pfeiffer's novel, The Girl from Petrovka. In order to research his role, he decided to go to a local bookstore in London and buy the book, but the store was all out. Giving up on his search for the day, he was about to board a train home when he spotted a book sitting on a nearby bench. Eerily, the book was none other than an abandoned copy of The Girl from Petrovka, full of handwritten annotations. While filming the movie two years later, the set was visited by George Pfeiffer, and while he was talking to Hopkins, he mentioned how he didn't even own a copy of his own book, as he had lent it to a friend who had lost it in London. Hopkins ran and grabbed his copy, and to their amazement, it was Pfeiffer's original copy, complete with his notes in the margins. Number 6. His Name Lives On Many people believe that a person's name can provide insight into their personality, give them power, or bring them luck. In the case of one name, luck and fate go head-to-head -head in a remarkable case of coincidence. In 1664, a ship sank off the coast of Wales in the Manai Strait. All of the 81 crew aboard perished except for one man named Hugh Williams. In 1785, a ship with 60 men aboard sank around the same location and everyone drowned except for a man named Hugh Williams, no relation. In 1820, another ship carrying 25 souls sank in the Manai Strait, and the only survivor was yet again named Hugh Williams. Some sources even place the date of these sinkings as all being on December 5th of the respective years, but that is contested. Either way, what may seem extremely spooky at first, in truth, might just be an amazing coincidence. Hundreds of ships have fallen victim to the treacherous Manai Strait over the centuries, and Hugh Williams has been a fairly common name for Welshmen, so maybe it's just an instance of picking out small trends from a huge sample size, but we'll let you decide. Number 5.
twin lives. Jim Lewis and Jim Springer were identical twins who were separated when they were only four weeks old. Though they didn't meet each other until they were 39, they both led incredibly similar lives. They had amazingly similar habits such as biting their fingernails, smoking Salem cigarettes, drinking Miller Lite, and they were both affected by migraines. They also made identical life choices. When they were kids, they both had dogs named Toy. They both had owned light blue Chevys, which they had driven to the same beach in Florida on vacation. They both were at one point part-time sheriffs, and astonishingly, they both had sons that were named James Allen, though the spelling of Allen was different. The most unbelievable similarity is that they both had first wives named Linda, whom they divorced, and then both remarried women named Betty. Of course, they had many things that they did differently as a result of their upbringing, but the chances of them sharing so many traits are mind-boggling. Number 4. Wizard's Coat there are many stories about the filming of the classic 1939 film, The Wizard of Oz, but one of the most intriguing involves a crazy coincidence. When it came time to find a coat for the character of fortune teller Professor Marvel, the wardrobe department went looking for one at the local secondhand store and grabbed as many coats as they could find that might fit actor Frank Morgan. The one that ended up fitting best was a green Prince Albert jacket that had worn with age. One day, Morgan happened to turn out the coat pocket and saw the name L. Frank Baum the author of the Wizard of Oz books. Morgan and the crew were flabbergasted at the coincidence and even contacted the tailor who made the coat to confirm. Sure enough, the tailor said that the jacket was made for Baum. Because of the lack of modern day evidence to confirm the story, it has gone down as legend, but several of the crew who worked on the set stood by the claims throughout their lives. Number three. Premonition. Sometimes a story in a book or a movie can be so uncanny to a real life event that happens later. The story appears prophetic. This is the case with Morgan Robertson's 1898 book, Futility, or The Wreck of the Titan. Though the book was published 14 years before the sinking of the Titanic, there are some striking coincidences between it and the real disaster. Futility is about a ship eerily called Titan, which is the largest ship of its day, as was the real Titanic, which hits an iceberg and sinks. Just like the Titanic, the Titan sinks in mid-April, was capable of speeds over 20 knots, and only carried the legal minimum number of lifeboats even though it was carrying thousands of passengers. After the Titanic sunk in 1912, many people realized the similarities and questioned Robertson on whether he was clairvoyant, to which he replied, No, I know what I'm writing about. That's all. Number 2. Impossible Eclipse Eclipses are something that seem to be normal to us Earth dwellers. When you think about the fact that in order for a total eclipse to happen, everything has to be just right, their existence is incredible. What may seem commonplace on our planet is actually a cosmic rarity. In order for an eclipse to occur, the sun and moon need to appear to be the same size to the viewer, and it just so happens that our sun and moon do. Amazingly, though the sun's diameter is about 400 times that of the moon's, it is also about 400 times farther away. This allows us to not only enjoy partial eclipses frequently, but also total eclipses every 100 years or so if you're stuck in the same location. So how rare is this compared to the rest of the universe? Well, it's hard to say, as we are still discovering new planets and galaxies, but so far it has proven to be unique to the Earth, at least in our solar system. There is no doubt that some other planet out there may have eclipses that happen as frequent as every minute or less, and we should enjoy eclipses now, because the moon is slowly moving farther away from the Earth, so millions of years from now, total eclipses won't even occur. Number 1. Presidential Link The last coincidence may be fodder for crackpot conspiracy theorists, but the facts involved are unmistakably eerie. If you have ever studied presidential assassinations in history class, you will know that there are some striking similarities between that of Abraham Lincoln's demise and that of John F. Kennedy's. First off, there are several coincidences between the two men themselves. They both were champions of civil rights, were elected to Congress exactly 100 years apart, were elected as president 100 years apart, both had children pass away while living in the White House, and both of their last names have seven letters. Looking at the assassinations, the coincidences get even more specific. Both Kennedy and Lincoln were both shot from behind and were seated next to their wives. Both were warned by their secretaries before the fateful events. Both assassinations happened on a Friday, and their successors were each named Johnson and were Southerners. If we compare their respective assassins, there too lies some odd similarities. John Wilkes Booth and Lee Harvey Oswald were born exactly 100 years apart, were Southerners, had names that were made up of 15 letters, and were themselves assassinated before their trials. Also, Booth ran from a theater and was caught in a warehouse, whereas Oswald ran from a warehouse and was captured in a theater. Some sources cite the fact that they both became known by three names as a coincidence as well, but this one is easily debunked as it is common practice for law enforcement to call criminals by their full name in order to separate them from anyone else who might have the same first and last name. Though it is without a doubt interesting to think about these coincidences as being some insight into fate or grand design, when you really look at the facts behind them, the truth points mostly to happenstance, or a case of apophenia, which is the psychological tendency to make patterns out of unrelated things. In a related coincidence, Lincoln's eldest son Robert Todd was present when 
President Garfield was assassinated in 1881 and at the exposition where President McKinley was assassinated in 1901. He would go on to refuse presidential invitations thereafter, admitting his own tragic luck. Subscribe for more videos.